Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, I'll probably do maybe one more video on this issue and then I will drop it. This idiot, that that cow that's sitting in front of you. Why you always gotta call women those names? No, if it was a guy, I'd be calling him a cow, a punk, an idiot, a moron. There are words that we ascribe to people to give people an understanding of our disdain for the ignorance that they portray. Listen to what this character, is that better? Yeah, says. When you have the lack of impulse control that a 19-year-old has, um, that affects the behavior that you exhibit. That's the child that I'm sitting across from. This is a, he's sad, he's mournful, he's remorseful. She's saying he's guilty. Now she's supposed to be representing his best interest and she's supposed to be portraying his, her client as not guilty because he's supposed to be presumed innocent until proven guilty, but she's already saying, oh, he's sorry for what he did and he wish he hadn't done it. I mean, 17 people are dead, but he, he, he saw we. He says he's sorry and he hopes everybody can forgive him and everybody go on with their life. And he just gets three, four years and gets back out on the street and everything gonna be fine. That's what she's trying to portray. But she's admitting that he's guilty because she cannot be perceived, she's a public defender, cannot be perceived as representing a guilty person and trying to get a guilty person off. But I guarantee you, if he had paid attorneys, you wouldn't be hearing them talk like this one is talking. Now, I want, want you to pay attention to how she is talking because notice what she is going to say in a couple of seconds about how she can't discuss certain things, but here she is discussing everything. Um, he is fully aware of what is going on. And he's just a broken human being. Does he, he have any broken. messages to be given to the community? I really can't um, disclose any conversations that I've had with him. So he hasn't said. But she just did, didn't she? He's sad, he's remorseful. Excuse me, but I thought you just said you couldn't disclose any of this information. Please, I, I can't disclose those he, conversations. That, that he... did, did, are you hearing her? Now, I haven't watched this video. I've watched up until the first one where she says she couldn't disclose, but this is how ignorant she is. Then I just, I'm bringing this video up because I just watched the CNN video where his neighbor filled him shooting a BB gun. Oh Lord, did you know that shooting a BB gun is signs for somebody to call the police and let them know that you might be prone to committing mass murder? If you listen to CNN, that's what it means. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in a culture where they teach us violence. They give us video games as children to play that are violent. And it started out with just the shooting games. You know, you get to shoot ducks and you get to shoot spaceships. You get to destroy them. Booyah! And then they came up with the games. Scorpion wins. Fatality. Okay. Then they came up with, get over here! Okay. Then they came up with, <laughs> Scorpion wins. Finish him. Ultimate fatality. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, they have been slowly introducing these video games to children saying, hey, they are proning them to desensitize them towards violence. There is more and more blood being shown in video games. Oh, look at that, that video game. Look at all the blood that's being shown. Oh, Grand Theft Auto. Oh God, look at what he shot him in the head. Oh God, and he goes on and he kills the next person and he kills the next person. This is our culture. <laughs> ROTC, we're training people to pick up weapons to fight other people. Donald Gump got on television talking about how we are mourning with you. Uh, your suffering is the nation's suffering and how we all need to be at peace. Did you guys hear the interview with Donald Trump? Okay, let's do it. D-O-N-A-L-D-T-R-U-M-P-T. -T. Sorry, gonna do it the way he spells it. Not gonna put Trump. 
his original name. Uh, uh, it says, Donald Trump responds to Florida shooting without mentioning guns. I'm not interested in that. I am N-A-T-I-O-N S-U-F-F-E-R-I-N-G. And let's do your suffering. Y-O-U-R-S-U-F-F-E-R-I-N-G is T-H-E. Donald Trump addresses the nation. Not looking for that one. I'm looking for this one. I believe it is this one. So let's go here. I believe this is the one I'm looking for. My fellow Americans, today I speak to a nation in grief. Yesterday, a school filled with innocent children and caring teachers became the scene of terrible violence, hatred, and evil. Now, first of all, take a look. This eye is about a quarter inch lower than this one. His face is lopsided. Okay, it's not that he's holding his head that way. His face is literally lopsided. And this toupee, two-piece, whatever this is, not going to talk about him. Sorry, he's the butt of many jokes. And so we're going to leave that alone. I want you to hear him talk about how the nation is mourning and how these innocent children and all of this. You, whatever you need. Okay. He's reading from a script, and then when he, when he turns his head all the way over, he's at living. But watch, he's going to go back to reading from the script. Whatever we can do to ease your pain. We are all joined together as one American family. And your suffering is our burden also. Okay, that's the part I forgot, is our burden also. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen what he says next. Now, I only listened to this one time, and I wanted to do a video immediately, immediately after I heard this. Because notice what he's going to talk about, peace and forgiving and getting along and coming together and loving and praying and just watch. I'm going to let the whole thing play up until the point I can't take no more. No child, no teacher should ever be in danger in an American school. No parent should ever have to fear for their sons and daughters when they kiss them goodbye in the morning. Each person who was stolen from us yesterday had a full life ahead of them, a life filled with wondrous beauty and unlimited potential and promise. Each one had dreams to pursue, love to give, and talents to share with the world. And each one had a family to whom they meant everything in the world. Today we mourn for all of those who lost their lives. We comfort the grieving and the wounded. And we hurt for the entire community of Parkland, Florida, that is now in shock and pain and searching for answers. To law enforcement, first responders, and teachers who responded so bravely in the face of danger, we thank you for your courage. Soon after the shooter, I spoke with Governor Scott to convey our deepest sympathies to the people of Florida and our determination to assist in any way that we can. I also spoke with Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi and Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel. I'm making plans to visit Parkland, to meet with families and local officials, and to continue coordinating the federal response. In these moments of heartache and darkness, we hold on to God's word in scripture. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will heal you. We trust in that promise 
and we hold fast to our fellow Americans in their time of sorrow. I want to speak now directly to America's children, especially those who feel lost, alone, confused, or even scared. Ladies and gentlemen, this that's all of that was a script that he was reading. For the most part, when he turns his head, he's at living. When he's looking this way, he's reading from a script. But I, this is what I want you to pay attention to. He says he's talking to the youth of America. Notice what he tells him our, as a nation, the ideals of the nation is. Hold on. I want you to know that you are never alone and you never will be. You have people who care about you, who love you, and who will do anything at all to protect you. If you need help, turn to a teacher, a family member, a local police officer, or a faith leader. Answer hate with love, answer cruelty with kindness. Can anybody say North Korea? I'm sorry, can anybody say North Korea? North Korea hasn't done anything to the United States. Doesn't matter what they said. Hold on. North Korea hasn't done anything to the United States. But this idiot's rhetoric, oh, and he's increasing military spending. But he's telling people to answer hatred with love. They only use that word when it suits them. He even said to quote scripture. What scripture was he quoting? Because he couldn't tell you that it was blah, 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 verse blah, 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 blah. Because then he would offend so many organizations, which is why he gave her verbatim quote. So that they could say that it was from so many different religious books that hold the same ideals. Hold on. We must also work together to create a culture in our country that embraces the dignity of life, that creates deep and meaningful human connections, and that turns classmates and colleagues into friends and neighbors. Then why are we killing people overseas? Why are we bombing villages, killing women and children, and then bragging about it? The U.S. military has just killed 200 ISIS insurgents only to find out they killed women and children who were not part of ISIS. The hypocrisy, the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy. That's what this whole little story about this shooting is about, ladies and gentlemen. They are gonna talk about guns and guns and guns and guns and guns. I don't carry a gun. I never will carry a gun. I've never fired a gun. I never will fire a gun. It is not in my desire or heart to fire a gun. I actually hate guns because I have seen the damage guns can do. I have lost friends to gunfire. Okay, so that's my personal opinion. It's not a religious opinion. It's not a Jehovah's Witness opinion. It is a personal opinion. I hate guns. But let's do it from a national opinion. That Second Amendment says we got the right to have our arms bared. Okay, so everybody wants to shout First Amendment, four, Second Amendment, eight, 19 billion amendments, and Congress will never change it. This idiot is part of the National Rifles Association, NRA. So you won't hear him talking about banning guns, but you'll hear them talking about gun legislation. That's right. You see, what they want to do is they want to make it more difficult for you to go out there and run a business and selling guns. But they want to promote, wait, wait, Fast and the Furious? Anybody ever heard of that? Where the government was literally selling guns on the street? That's right. That's how they get into the hands of individuals like that person. That's how that happens, ladies and gentlemen. But according to this great nation, we are supposed to be 
appreciating one another, understanding cultural differences, teaching love, teaching individuals to get together and get along as communities and coming together as communities. But I thought we were a world community. I thought this was the planet Earth, not the planet United States. So how can we teach that within the borders of the United States? This is just hypothetically speaking. How can we teach that within the borders of the United States out of a mouth like this and then start talking about, well, watch this. Let's get rid of Florida shooter. And let's do N-O-R-T-H, North Korea threat, North Korea fire and fury. North Korea rocket man. I didn't make this stuff up, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just do North Korea. Okay? Now they say Kim Jong Un, ladies and gentlemen, we don't even speak Korean. So how do we know what Kim Jong Un is saying? But Donald Trump says he's mentally deranged and this he's a dotard. He can't say retard because then that would be offensive. Oh, let me say, I have grown to appreciate, I saw my first episode about three weeks ago of Speechless. I had never seen the show before, didn't even know what it was. I saw the title and didn't pay any attention to it, but then I decided to watch the first episode to see what the show is about. That stupid show is hilarious, okay? Ooh, and I used to work with individuals who had cerebral palsy. And so I have, uh, well, most of them are no longer living because cerebral palsy is a disease where your lifespan is not that long. And so I had a lot of friends who had either multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, and not too many who had muscular dystrophy. It, even though muscular dystrophy is a very well-known disease and affects so much of our population, I haven't run into too many people who've had muscular dystrophy. And the ones I have run into are in wheelchairs or respirators and all of that stuff. But, man, that is amazing. Um, it says, North Korea responds to Trump's personal attack. Now, remember, North Korea wasn't bothering nobody before this man came into this office. He hasn't threatened his neighbors, but we were told he was, North Korea was threatening their neighbors. When his father died and he took over, they were talking about blah, 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 only to find out that they're only increasing their military spending as a result of the United States going over there and having their military war games with South Korea as a pompous show. We are told that North Korea is the bad guy. And don't get me wrong, I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. North Korea treats Jehovah's Witnesses like garbage. Worse than they treat those other people that you'll be hearing about the young man who came back to the United States and then died. They treat Jehovah's Witnesses worse than that. They, North Korea, as a government, hates Jehovah's Witnesses. Not primarily for the religious aspect, but because they will not join the military. So they are treated very badly in North Korea. But this is not a video to talk about that. I am not, I'm only here to talk about the hypocrisy. Because... We talked about how the United States used to take Jehovah's Witnesses, used to beat them, used to put them in jail, even the women. Showed you guys the video. If you ever get a chance, go listen to the, what's the, uh, Hayden Covington interview. You can find it out there where you can listen to it, where he actually talks about how they treated the women, how they treated the children, how they separated them just because they went and knocked on doors. This is this government. Russia did the same thing. So all of these governments I have no respect for. I don't like North Korea. I just don't believe everything the media says about North Korea because the same things going on in North Korea that they're claiming is happening. We see the same thing going on here on one level or the other. Before it was blacks, after blacks, Jehovah's Witnesses, after Jehovah's Witnesses, Asians or Japanese or Chinese individuals. After that, Korean people. After that, Vietnamese. 
Do you understand? The United States always finds a group to discriminate against every single step of the way. But according to him, we must be loving. We must be better. We must be this. We must not stop it. Stop it. We have a culture of guns. The young man in Florida was part of the ROTC when he was in school. He liked guns, like all kids like guns. Watch this. I just put in water gun looked real. Just that simple. Teens toy guns looked real to cops. Because this is the culture, people. I don't know this. I just decided to put in a phrase. Water gun looks real. Okay, I could have just put in the phrase looked real or gun looked real, and that would have pulled up, but this pulled up 1.3 million results only on YouTube. If I'd gone into Google, it would have been over 50 million results. You don't believe me? Watch this. I'm only doing averages here. Oh, 30 million. Dag nabbit. Hold on. 21 million. Okay. Okay. Water gun looks real. Okay. And these are the images of the guns. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. If this is a water gun, it would look real from a distance. Even at night, this would look real. Okay. This right here, the color of it, you, you, you know that that ain't real. But what if they started making fake guns look like this? So that the per uh, it's a toy, it's a toy, pop, 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 pop. Okay, do you understand? Oh, <laughs> and it's Amazon. It's the first place you can buy a water gun. Oh, little kids, 838 Paw Pistol Water Rescue Pack toy. Paw Pistol, I mean, Excuse me, patrol pistol. Don't know why I had that word in my head. Paul, Paul, hey, Paul, Paul, can you get me one of them patrol guns? Yeah, and the rest of the pack, I want my value pack. I don't just want a regular variety pack. I want the value pack, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, little kids, because this is the culture in America, is to peddle this stuff to kids. Yes, gun manufacturers and toy manufacturers make the stuff look real. Why? Because this is the culture in America. So when you have these shootings, and let's say, again, I don't know all of the facts because I don't watch the news and I don't care to hear about the tabloids, about what they say this kid did and how he was that. Look, accidentally shot. Real gun goes off in Texas in water gunfight, teen hospitalized. Excuse me? Real gun goes off in Texas in water gunfight? Excuse me? Because, ladies and gentlemen, somebody made it appear that it was real. I didn't mean to click on it. Gun crazy. A water gun fight in Houston somehow takes a dangerous turn. What started out as an innocent water gun fight at a family barbecue party in Houston, Texas on Saturday ended with a trip to the hospital for one teenager. A 15-year-old was playing with water guns at a party at a Houston <laughs> suburb when she was shot by an actual bullet. Witnesses say an adult male who was at the party went to his car to get some dry clothes, then took out his handgun and began twirling the weapon before the gun suddenly went off. Two bullets were discharged. One hit the teen in the shoulder, just an inch from her neck. The other bullet hit a car parked five houses down the road. According to Houston's NBC affiliate KPRC, Ooh. the girl was taken to a hospital and is currently in stable condition. Meanwhile, the gun-twirling man has been charged with deadly conduct.
deadly conduct. Look, girl with guns or children with guns, this 10 year old girl gets a Beretta shotgun as a gift. Okay. Please understand five most horrendous moments ever captured on live TV. Oh, well, this is where the guy ended up shooting the reporter. I already know that I saw that and I don't want to see that again ever. Now, an Uber driver shoots dead a so-called armed robber in Florida. People, this is our culture. All of these videos are about this. This is our culture. So what happened in Florida, they're going to keep making it happen because they need to get the real guns out of the people's hands for when they put in their Century 21, Agenda 21 plan. You just have to read the Agenda 21. Uh, hold on. I am interested in this one because I just didn't know. Homemade 22 Nerf gun. The individual shows people how to make a homemade Nerf gun. Do you see this? Do, do you see this? I'm not going to show this to y'all. Uh-uh. Okay, this is our society, people. Lord have mercy. Do you not understand? So they get on TV telling people about how horrendous and how insane and how brutal and they use all kind of catch phrases because it's scripted, ladies and gentlemen. I told you December 29th or about that this year, the beginning of this year, I told all of you to be prepared because this is what the government shut down, the government crisis, the tax bill being released, blah, blah, blah. That's what it was all about. That was all a smokescreen so you wouldn't pay attention. That's why Las Vegas happened when it did, so that they can be talking about gun control and gun legislation so that the police can act with extremes because they had all the children walking away, fearing for their lives with their hands above their head. Excuse me? Well, they could have been one of the people doing the shooting. Really? Again, there's too much about that story that doesn't make sense. And then the police go into the classroom and they tell all the children to put their phones down because, of course, they don't want to mistake the phone for a gun. Okay, that's going to be their excuse. No, they didn't want them taking pictures of what was going on in that classroom, them coming in the way they did. Okay, this is a wonderful world. It's a wonderful time. And I'm sorry to all of you, but it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. Okay, it's just, this is the world we live in. Even this modified cool water gun looks real. Okay, why is it that people want water guns that look real? Now, I got to admit, I had a friend and he had a, a toy gun and he carried it in his car. I, I, at the time, this was the 80s, so it wasn't that big of a deal. We weren't living in the 2000s or the late 90s. But he carried it, he carried it around. It was nothing but a BB gun, but it actually looked real. And there was this desire to get something like it, but I couldn't find anything. Okay, so it's not like even myself, I didn't want one. So again, it's the attraction to people for having something that's a toy that looks real, that looks like this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's why so many people pull pranks with these fake guns and end up getting shot themselves. Okay? So many people. This is what our society, why would you want a blank gun? Okay? 
This is what our society has done. This is what's going on. But yet we want to tell other people about how we're a nation of families and nation of love and a nation of, well, we're not dysfunctional anymore. No, it's only a few of our lost children that are dysfunctional. Yeah, he was disturbed. He was weird. He was a loner. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't be a loner in America anymore. Because if you're a loner, you're thinking about killing somebody. Trust me. I'm not making this up. Listen to the news. Every single time this happens, they talk about the individual being a loner. So if you are a loner, you are prone to have psychotic episodes and to go out there and just shoot up an entire stadium of people. You're right. This is going to lead to more searches in places like sporting arenas, movie theaters. Uh, we already have, I did not know that in schools you can't bring backpacks now. I did not know that they had that rule in schools where you can't bring backpacks. That is interesting. Apparently, that school was one of those schools. Oh, and by the way, they say he took an Uber car to the school and he had his little carrying case, soft carrying case with the gun inside with all the magazines. Excuse me. I'm an Uber driver. I got this teenager getting into my car and we're going to a school and he's bringing his bag. And those magazines are not made out of plastic. They're made out of metal. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hear something. I'm going to be keen on something. But something's not right about the story. Even him standing in court. At least he wasn't like the last guy they brought in court where you could tell he was drugged up, drugged up out of the yin-yang. Okay? There is something not right with this story. That's all I can say. But with that being said, the beginning of this year, there was going to be a lot more issues dealing with gun violence. And ladies and gentlemen, as I said about the Las Vegas shooting, it's always women and children, okay? That's who they go after, women and children, when they do these events because they have to highlight that. They have to pull on everybody's heartstrings. Again, I am very, very sorry, and this is not no disclaimer. I hate death, so I am very sorry that these people have lost their lives as a result of stupidity. Every single time it happens, it does disturb me, which is why you hear me talking about it now for 32 minutes. But as you can see, we live in a culture of violence where it is advertised. Or no, we do one more thing. Forget this. I would, why would you want to? Hey everybody, it's uh, Michael uh, from uh, Replica Air Guns with another instructional yeah. video, Replica tutorial, informative video, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Anyways, Replica this video Air is gun. entitled "Why Would You Want a Blank Gun?" And this is yet another question that people ask over and over again. So why not make a video about it? I've talked about it a little bit in a few videos. I've mentioned some reasons why you may want a blank gun, I but I haven't addressed right here, the subject gentlemen. in a specific video to date. Right so first here. of all, what is a blank is gun? The best way to describe a blank gun is to imagine so it blood. as if it were a real gun okay. in just about every way except for I one. I want this. Let's see. I'm just interested. Let's see some of our video games. That way. In the world of video games, we couldn't limit play. ourselves to just 10 of the most violent ones out there. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down another of the top 10 most violent video games. For this list, we're looking at video games that are particularly violent, paying special attention to the reception the games received due to their violence. If there's a game you think should be on this list, be sure to take a look at our original list of the top 10 most violent video games. Number 10, Gears of War series. This third-person shooter is all about saving the human race by blowing up, dismembering, and destroying the Locust Horde and other alien and humanoid threats. The game provides an extra challenge by obscuring the player's view when blood splatters all over the camera, 
usually when mutilating enemies with weapons like chainsaws, firearms, and grenades. Not enough violence for you? Well, you can always use enemies as a human shield. It's never been quite so fun destroying aliens, as the gore is wrapped up in fun and innovative gameplay mechanics. Plus, the story is straight out of an 80s action flick. Problem! Something's wrong with this thing! Number 9. No More Heroes Most games that were released on the Nintendo Wii were generally family friendly. This was not one of those games. Oh, no more a comedic Nintendo hack and slash, this game follows Travis Touchdown, a wrestling enthusiast, as he becomes an assassin in order to pay for more video games. Very smooth victories at Travis. But a win is a win. He makes his way up the ranks of the United Assassins Association, often defeating his opponents in gruesome fashion using dismemberment, decapitation, and a whole lot of spewing blood in the style of Kill Bill. The game was so violent that European and Japanese releases were highly censored, editing down many of the deaths and battle scenes. Use your ticket to paradise, old man. Number 8. Deadpool I will always remember this moment. Everyone's favorite Merc with a Mouth made his video game debut in 2013, and it was about as violent as his fans could have hoped. Utilizing his trademark guns and swords, he shoots, chops, and cuts his way through wave after wave of henchmen as well as certain D-list Marvel supervillains. It's clear from the get-go that this is not a Spider-Man game, and this lovable psychopath has no reservations about taking down anyone in his way, with his signature style and humor, of course. So much bloodletting has never been quite so gleeful. Excuse me, sir. Number 7. Hotline Miami Series This duo of stylized, top-down shooters was highly inspired by 80s culture and action films. The main character here goes on a graphic killing spree after being instructed to do so under mysterious circumstances. Gameplay consists of essentially mowing down legions of enemies using stealth, strategy, and a wide arsenal of weapons. These range from killing enemies with your bare hands to shooting them down with machine guns, of course. Had enough? This is our culture. So when we see it act out on live television, or when we see it being portrayed in actual reality, people want to get upset. Ladies and gentlemen, you must put the blame where the blame belongs. It is the culture of this nation, the culture of this world. It is this generation that is this way. And until people start to understand this, this is going to continue to happen. And people are going to be continually sitting up there talking about how shocked they are, and they're going to take it out on the wrong people. It is not the loners. It is not the little children who have been going through this change or that change that's causing this to happen. It is the fact that our society first has forgotten about the children. They talk about children all the time, but they've taken away every single real after-school program children used to be a part of. We teach them sports that are violent. Even basketball is getting more violent. Football, violent. Hockey, violent. I mean, we are teaching our youth violence. This is what we do as a nation. And I don't say I say we because I'm not saying that I'm guilty of it because I definitely abhor violence. I hate violence. But ever watched a violent movie? Well, then you are a contributor. Ever told someone about a movie that you watched that was violent? Then you are a contributor. You heard me talk about The Matrix. <laughs> Man, The Matrix was bloody and violent. Come on now. Even though there wasn't a lot of gore, there was a lot of killing. But they were computer simulated programs. No, they were people. It was only the storyline that said they were computer simulated programs. But when he was using those machine guns and they were just going through that building and then unloading and then getting rid of flipping through the air and shooting people in the head and uh, shooting Agent Smith in the head. Or, and then he would transform and shoot the other agents in the head and they would transform, ladies and gentlemen. If you've ever promoted a violent movie, then you are part of that culture. 
okay, you have to accept some blame. The industry is the way it is, is because we have allowed it to become that way. I'm not telling people to go out there and protest. No, I'm telling people, if you're gonna point the blame associated with all of us, you heard me, all of us are guilty. Because we sat here and remained silent. Well, I didn't remain silent. I told him about I, I, then I ain't talking about you, so shut up. I said, we. I'm talking about that group. If you ain't part of we, then you need to go get your own group, formulate your own group, make your own videos, and tell people how you ain't a part of nothing, and you ain't got no fault, no blame, and you're perfect. Okay? But for the rest of us who understand that we bear some culpability, yes, we are accomplices. Sorry. We are accomplices. Do you understand that's why this world is in the situation it is now? Because all of us are accomplices? That's why we are all to blame for the plight of this so-called planet? Something's got to change. Can't tell you what. Can't tell you how. Not my job. What I can tell you is you need to be aware that something's got to change. You need to be aware that you can't listen to the news and you can't listen to politicians because that junk is all scripted. Okay. Um, watch this so that you'll know. S-C-R-I-P-T-E-D. Now, I just did scripted and notice it had scripted news. Let's find out about the scripted news. Hold on. Out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny this stuff this Daily year. Show. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take some of the spring out of the Easter Bunny stuff this year. Economic factors may take the spring out of the stuff of the Easter Bunny this year. Mike Meyer says, yeah, baby. 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 Did I say that right? Yeah, say it right. Yeah, baby. Talk show host Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be able to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on his late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Well, Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope do you get some picture that's why i don't watch the news when i first started going between channels and hearing the exact same story with the exact same words i stopped watching the news i used to watch it every day as a child my mother made us watch the evening news every single day so in the morning that's how i found it about 9 11 is because when i woke up that morning pacific standard time which was six o'clock 
9 o'clock Eastern time, I turned on the news. I thought I was watching some old show, black and white, because that's what it appeared, only to realize it was live TV. That was my routine, turning on the news first thing in the morning, watching the evening news every evening, and then watching the late night news every mid-evening. Not no more. Because the news is all scripted. That whole Florida thing scripted. That whole Las Vegas thing scripted, people. So where do you go to get the news? I just listen to what they're saying, and I'm able to take the words of what they're saying and understand what they are really saying. Because I understand legalese. I understand the people who put the junk together. I understand promotion and advertisement and soft sales and blah, 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 blah. I understand all of that junk. So I'm able to listen. That's how I can tell you that what Trump was reading was a script. Why? Because I know how he normally speaks. I know what words he normally uses. And pay attention. They dumb down his speeches for him to give speeches so that he can look more presidential. So now when he speaks in the future, you're not so shocked by the words because every time he gives a speech from one of his speech writers, that's gonna help shape and change his vocabulary. It happened with George Bush when he was in office, both of them, even though his father, because he worked for the CIA and was an intelligence officer, he already had the language put together. When he was vice president under Reagan, he had the language put together. His son had nothing by which to go by. He was only a governor. Please. But when he became president and all the speech writing, okay, you fooled me once, <laughs> you fooled me twice. <laughs> but you, 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 huh? Yeah, that's, that's what I was trying to say, okay? That's how you knew he was an idiot. That's why you don't hear from him. People, you don't hear from him because he does have some psychological issues. We knew this. That's why you don't hear from him. He's not in seclusion. They're keeping him away from the public on purpose. Okay, wait, hold on. Oh, hold on. I don't know if he's George, yeah, George W. G. E. O. R. G. E. And we're going to do. The because we got to do the um, Jorge Bush. I just put George W. Bush out of the spotlight. Now this one says three years ago, eleven months ago. I like Judge W. Bush now. Liberals warm up to the former president after his criticism of Trump. <laughs> he criticizes Trump? Oh, Lord! Okay. George W. Bush and Michelle Obama, an unlikely friendship. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because he's a lonely man. Okay. Reluctantly drawn back into political spotlight reluctantly why why do they say reluctantly because they took him out because he had some issues okay just that simple he had some issues so i just want to let y'all know this is how i'm able to determine what's what Oh, and I I just want to hear this because I ain't heard this, y'all. Former U.S. President George uh, W. Bush is back in the spotlight, and he is promoting his new painting book, but getting him even more attention is recent criticism of a fellow Republican. Donald Trump. Once the country's uh, least popular living president, Bush now seems to be scoring favor even with those who traditionally support his Democrat opponents. Annie Parampel takes a look. 
George Bush slams Donald Trump, read a headline at Huffington Post after Bush turned up the heat, dissed and threw shade at President Trump by taking what you'd think is a brave stance against racism. Yes, now that Bush 43 has denounced President Trump, even liberals can find some room in their hearts for W. Okay. That's how I'm able to understand. I don't need to listen to the rest of that to understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to polish up his image. And they're using Trump, the issues with Trump and the fact that people don't like Trump because they put Trump in office the same as they put him in office. Okay, this is just the way they do things. Hey, Laurel. Hey, Hardy. How y'all doing? All right. So that's what I wanted to say to all of you regarding our culture. Our culture because we're a part of this, all of us. Doesn't matter if you say, I'm no part of nobody's world. Excuse me. You are part of the culture. When you go to the mall, when you buy this, when you go to the movies, when you watch that, when you download this, when you download that, you are part of the culture. Sorry, it is just the facts. You need to understand it is simply the fact. Have a great, 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 great day, everybody. I hope everything goes well with you. And to those of you who are in Florida who were affected by that event, I truly am sorry and I do hope that you can receive and obtain the strength and the support to get through those times. And I say those times because we know that it won't end. The sorrow that you're going through will not end tomorrow will not end next week, will not end next month, will not end next year. Sorry, life doesn't work that way. So I am sorry that you're having to go through that. Have a good afternoon, all. Goodbye.